In the second leg of lecture 9, we are going to look at assembling programs. Assembling is the process of converting an assembly program into machine code. In this process, each instruction is converted into the equivalent machine code. The machine codes for the different instructions in the program are then loaded into memory so that the microprocessor can fetch and execute them. Assembling can be done manually or can be done using a program called an assembler. So the process for assembling manually uses the principles for converting assembly instructions into machine code that we learned in the previous lecture. When you use an assembler, the process is made to be faster. So the computer changes the assembly instructions into machine code for you and at a faster speed. Let's illustrate the assembling process using an example. We have got a program here that we want to change into machine code and load the code into memory starting at address 1800H. The first instruction gives us a 2-byte machine code and the code is going to be loaded into addresses 1800 and 1801. The second instruction gives us another 2-byte code that is going to be loaded into memory. It addresses 1802 and 1803. The third instruction, another 2-byte code that is going to be loaded into addresses 1804 and 1805. And the last instruction is a single-byte uh, instruction. It is going to be loaded into location. 1806H. So we have assembled the program and loaded it into memory. Each code for, the, for each instruction is obtained using the methods that we used in lecture 8. Let us also apply the assembling process to the program for calculating electrical power. We would want to load the program into memory starting at address 1801H. The first instruction is a 2-byte instruction. It is going to be loaded into addresses 1801 and 1802. The second instruction is a 3-byte instruction. It is going to be loaded into addresses 1803 up to 1805. The third instruction is a 4-byte instruction. It is going to be loaded into addresses 1806H up to 1809H. The last instruction is a single byte instruction. It is going to be loaded into address 180AH. Pseudo opcodes are symbols in the assembly program that are used to give instructions to be followed during the process of assembling the program. They themselves are not translated into machine code, but are only used to give information as to how the program should be assembled. Typical pseudo opcodes are ORG tells the assembler where to start putting the code in memory. So the code could be program code or could be data items. The equate statements that is used to assign a symbolic name to a numerical value. DB and DW, these are used to tell the assembler to load a series of bytes or words into memory during the programming phase. So the DB is the one that is used for loading bytes. The DW is the one that is used for loading words. Here is an example 
to illustrate the use of pseudo opcodes in a program. The first statement uses the equate pseudo opcode to assign a symbol to a value. In this case, it assigns the word or the symbol bias to the value 7FH. What it means is that every time that we come across the word bias, it means the value 7FH. So the equate statement is used to represent values using more readable and more understandable symbols like bias. This makes the program to be more readable and easier to follow. The second statement uses the ORG pseudo opcode to define the starting address for loading the program in memory. As you can see there, after the ORG statement, we've got three instructions that make up the program. So since the ORG st statement is just above the section of the code, it means the code is going to be loaded into memory starting at address 1800H. So the program has now been loaded in the memory and as you can see there, it has been loaded starting from address 1800 as defined by the ORG statement. Then where there was a bias, we replace using the value 7FH. So the third instruction in the program section is the one that makes use of the predefined symbol or predefined word bias. So when we assemble that instruction, the point at which the bias is, is going to be replaced with the value 7FH. As we can see in the memory, that value 7F, which is called to bias, is stored at memory address 1803H. We will notice that if our assembly program contains branching instructions, the instructions to be branched to are specified using labels. In machine code, the instructions to be branched to are specified using either absolute address values or offset values, depending on whether the branch is absolute or relative. An absolute address is equal to the address value represented by the label. An offset value can be loosely defined as the number of steps that we jump from the current instruction to get to the instruction that we intend to branch to. The formula that can be used to calculate the offset is Offset equals target address minus current address minus 2. Target address is the address of the instruction that we want to branch to. Current address is the address of the current instruction, which is the address of the instruction that is causing the branching. The 2 is included to accommodate the program counter since it would have changed after fetching. The current instruction. So for relative branch instructions, the program counter would have incremented by 2. The offset value is represented in 2's complement format. If you are branching to lower addresses, the value is negative. If you are branching to higher addresses, the offset is positive. To get absolute and offset values, we first assemble the program with blank memory spaces left for the absolute and offset values. After we've done this assembly, we'll be able to read off the addressive values represented by the labels. Those address values can then be filled in 
as absolute addresses if we need absolute addresses or can be used to calculate and fill in with offsets if we need offsets. The copy paste program can be used to illustrate assembly when our program contains labels. We intend to load this program starting at address 1850H. The first instruction is three bytes. It goes into addresses 1850 up to 1852. Second instruction, three bytes goes into addresses 1853 up to 1855. Third instruction, three bytes again, goes into addresses 1856 up to 1858. The next instruction is a two byte instruction, it goes into addresses 1859 and 185A. We notice that the instruction is labeled, the lab was moved next. So we can automatically read the address value represented by the label, move next. So the address value there is 1859H. We go to the next instruction, which is two bytes, goes into addresses 185B and 185C. Next instruction, single byte, goes into 185D. Next instruction, single byte goes into 185E. Another single byte instruction goes into 185F. The next one is a relative jump instruction. It is a two byte instruction. It goes into addresses 1860 and 1861. So at the moment, we don't have the offset. The offset is the one that goes into 18, 1861. So we leave the 1861 blank and just fill in the first byte. We proceed to the next instruction. It is a single byte instruction. It goes into address 1862H. So after we've gone through the whole program, we go back now to calculate our offset values. We only have got one offset value and fill it in into the blank. So the address that we want to branch to is 1859H and the address that we are branching from is 1860H. So apply the formula. Offset is 1859 minus 1860 minus 2, which gives us F7. So the value is negative because we are branching to a lower address value. Then that F7, we load it into the address 1861. So we have finished assembling that program. An assembling sheet can be very handy when manually assembling programs. So the sheet has got four columns. The first column is for labels. The second column is where you put in your instructions. Third column is the memory address of the instruction when it goes into memory. Then the last column is for the code of the instruction. So after developing your program, you can write it into the first two columns. So your labels are in the first column and your, your assembly instructions are in the second column. So after that, you can uh, now determine the equivalent machine codes for each instruction and also determine the addresses at which they are going to be loaded in memory. And after that, you have uh, assembly to program. You have something like this. So the first instruction will be loaded starting from address 1850H. It is a three byte instruction. So which means the next address is going to be 1853. So you add the three, the three bytes to the starting address of the instruction to 1850, 1853. So the second one is again three bytes. So if you add three to 1853, 
the starting address of the next instruction will be 1856. So you repeat the process until you get to the end. As exercise, you can assemble the street lights program that is shown here with some modifications. The solution is provided. However, for practice, I recommend that you attempt and do your own solution, then compare it to the solution that I have generated myself. Here is the solution. So the best thing that you can do is uh, pause your video while you are uh, seeing the question, then attempt the solution so that you can proceed. Then uh, give a look at the solution while it's comparing to your solution. Let's illustrate the execution of a program in a microprocessor. For our illustration, we're going to use the Intel 8085 because of the simplicity of its instructions. The 8085 reads instructions and data one byte at a time from memory. And the, that is going to make our illustration easier to comprehend. The program that we're going to use is a program that reads the value on port 06H, adds a constant to it, and the stores the results in memory. The program is written using the 8086 style of assembly programs. Then the letters A and B that we see in the program are names of registers. So you've got a different naming cell for registers in the 8085. That is the 8085 machine code for the program. The diagram also shows the contents of the data section of the memory. The program section is inside the red border. The data section is inside the blue border. So our program starts from 0850 and ends at 0858. Our data starts at 0859 and ends at 0850. So in the data section, inside those memory locations are the values that are initially loaded there. Then on the ports, these are the values that are there. So on port 04, the value that is there is G506, there is 16. Let's now illustrate the execution of the program. We are interested in knowing the contents of the program counter PC, the instruction register IR, the data registers A and B, as well as the carry flag as the program executes. The program counter initially contains the value 0850, which is the first instruction in the program. So the first thing is to fetch the first byte. So the first byte is DB. In the 8085, a DB indicates that a second byte is required to get a full instruction. So the processor goes on to fetch the next byte, 80851. After that, we have got a full instruction. So the next thing is to execute the instruction. So the execution part is the reading of a value from port 06H into the accumulator. So after that instruction, the accumulator will be containing the value 16H. We fetch the next instruction. The instruction indicates it requires another byte. So we're going to fetch the next byte. 
we know we've got a full instruction. So the next step is to execute the instruction. So execution of this instruction is loading of the value 7f into the register B. So you can see that the 7f comes from part of the value in the instruction register. We fetch the next instruction, which is 80854. This one is a single byte instruction. So the next stage is to execute the instruction. So this is an end with the carry. It affects the register A and the carry flag. So the carry is cleared because there is no carry out. We fetch the next instruction at 0855. Decode the 32 indicates that the instruction needs two more bytes in order for it to be full. So we're going to fetch the next two bytes into the instruction register. Then the next thing is to execute the instruction. So the instruction is uh, for loading, of, uh, is for storing the value in accumulator into memory. So the accumulator has been stored at your address 085C. The next instruction is a single byte. We now go to execute. So this is a halt instruction. So execution of the out instruction is decrementing of the program counter so that you point back at the same instruction. So this makes the microprocessor not to proceed to the instructions that follow a out. It can only leave the out after a reset or after some interrupts have been received. This example illustrates a typical use of the DB statement. The first statement, ORG 2800H, defines the address at which we want to start loading the bytes in memory at the programming phase. The second statement is the one that causes the loading of those bytes into memory. So this statement actually causes loading of 16 bytes into memory those bytes will start from the address 2800H. The hex is included there for reference purposes. It is equivalent to the address at that point, which is the address of the first item that we loaded into memory. Therefore, it is equal to 2800H. It will be used in the program for reference purposes. A typical use of uh, this kind of scenario is to produce lookup table, for example, a table for seven segment codes for the X digits zero through to F. So actually in that statement, those codes represent the seven segment codes for the X digits 0 through to F. So what happens there is when you want to access a code, you need to specify the X value of the code and you add that X value to the base or to the starting address to X. So X is 2800, run the code for 5, you add 5 to x so that you get to 805. So it means that the memory location 2805, you store the code for the digit 5. And when you retrieve that code, it can be used to illuminate a 7 segment display. Try out these questions from chapter 5 is the exercise and practice.